here we've got the main amplifier board. We've got these two connectors that uh, quite intelligent here. You really can't uh, place all the different connectors on here incorrectly. I mean, you can, but it's pretty easy to figure out where they go. Uh, we've got positions uh, one and four here, which are direction, uh, populated with one being male, one being female. So the analogical place in the board, which it could be incorrect, the analogical place in the board is right here. So you just fit it like so. Sure, you can get it to physically fit in other spots, but logically it would only go there. You know, whether or not that's correct, who knows? You know, maybe it was something crazy, but yeah. So that's the basic idea is that these can't go wrong. Uh, we can see fairly heavy tracks on the bottom board here. The top board being very simple little daughter board connected with these uh, board to board interconnects. Uh, secured in by these socket head parts. It's these large, probably inductors right here. They're kind of like the papery style ones with just wire wrapped through it. Um, it has been repaired there are many year, many times over the years. There's this orange sticker with doesn't mean anything on it. We've got this number seven MB test sticker from 1997, and some various writing on the board that probably a lot of it wasn't stock. You can actually see they stacked the resistors because these two boards are identical and every position it is a 1k resistor except in this spot they're obviously stacking <laughs> probably didn't have in stock a 1k was it 5 watt yeah 5 watt resistor so I had to stack two uh, 2k 5 watt resistors to get a 1k 5 watt well technically a 1k 10 watt but to get your 1k resistor there so that was a little repair job at one point quite interesting these boards um, mix of weird components you really don't see anymore. Uh, I mean, you know, got the usual axial lead capacitors, these strange uh, things, uh, whatever they are, either caps or inductors or something, correct me. Medium large power resistors, but we got uh, this part screwed down with a little lead thing that comes over. It's kind of, I want to look at that. I don't have my, <laughs> look at my large spanner over here. Does it fit? do things by hand. Let's see if we can free that part. I'm just a little bit confused. Is it wonder if it's like for temperature? It's a Motorola part. Actually, both of them are Motorola parts. So we've got this little strange part that goes there. And it looks like we've got probably thermal shutoff switches kind of laid throughout the board. You know, this thing gets too hot, shut it down. Also, the board we've got another little part. There's these. These guys, which are MS DS7204. They've got their own little heat sink poking out the top there. And we've just got one of these, they both op amps. NA5534N, RC455BP by Texas Instruments. And yeah, both these boards are identical, just flipped. We have this giant heatsink. We haven't seen anything that really has that much power involved yet until you flip it over. And of course, you get all of those transistors. That is just a ton. Uh, probably most of it's going into doing the amplification, but they might actually use some of these for power regulation don't quite know just to throw it on the board but yeah it's just a bunch imagine having to replace all of them now to get this apart looks like each of the transistors is socketed in and then the actual socket seems to be soldered onto the the actual board here socket does not seem to be attached to the heat sink specifically so i think if you took out all the screws this board would then lift off and we can see the other side it looks like to be quite some interesting stuff. Of course, the only logical thing to do then is to remove every single one of these screws and see if it lifts off. And now with this one free, just have to figure out what style of socket connector these are. These are pins on the bottom board and these are just connectors on the top, so this should in theory lift right off. And it does. So we can now flip that over, 
Now it just looks like one little bodge, or might be intentional, just there's no room on the other side. The funky hand done board. Actually see the uh, screw has been through the flow solder process. Interesting, there seems to be some corrosion in between these two pins. Hopefully it's not shorting. Oh cute, even says driver on it. You see this is the CS4 power board. It's a giant X on it, that's never a really good sign. 22278. Well the only assumed way to take this off is to start removing all those screws on the other side. We only have to go down, looks like about four transistors, about halfway down. It's actually stuck down by this probably diode temperature sensor that's soldered onto the board and riveted down so you can't uh, remove it besides desoldering it. You know what happens when we have to desolder on here. Snip. Poor man's desoldering. Snip. The board has been freed. And if you notice, where'd all the, the transistors go? On the bench. You can test them, but they, uh, they all probably still work fine. So... Oh, they're heavily magnetic. Just gotta clean off all of the wonderful grease. Oh, well. <laughs> Oops. I mean, that works too, I guess. That'll be a lovely mess to clean later. Oops. So here's our glorious board. We've already seen that side, basically. You know, lovely, curvy, swirly, do whatever. It's single-sided board. There's nothing but components on here. You see a bunch of resistors, quite crazy ones. Um, these long ones are 0.33 ohm. Yeah, 10 watt resistor that size. Should be five watt for the half. Uh, yeah, quite a bit of power resistors. Just a few caps there, and diodes across here. It's just a couple jumpers. You got pretty much away with the jumpers there. A few resistors on the back, and that's just about it. I love the Sharpie squiggles here and there. I love the blue. The blue is very classy. 